Cancer is a very nasty disease because it begins with your own cells going crazy. Cancer starts with a single cell in the body. Due to a number of different factors, a switch is turned on that orders the cell to begin dividing at an alarming rate. This initial cell will start to accumulate offspring and form a tumor mass. The speed of accumulation of these cells determines the cancer's aggressiveness. So how is it that our body can fight against bacteria and viral infections like the flu, yet it cannot recognize its own cells causing it harm? Well, our bodies ignore cancer cells because the immune system is not equipped to recognize threats from the inside. Rather than treating cancerous cells as a danger, our immune system recognizes them as part of the body. Strategies to fight cancer were initially based on chemicals to stop cell division. Chemotherapy, one of the most well-known cancer-fighting tools, is a powerful weapon against cancer cells. But this strategy is akin to a carpet bombing, killing the bad cells while also causing collateral damage. In contrast, targeted cancer therapies can be compared to very sophisticated smart missiles that will track and kill the cancer cells without harming the rest of the body. The more efficient targeted cancer therapies harness the power of the immune system, and these therapies focus on the most powerful cell-killing machine, T-cells. T-cells circulate in our blood vessels looking for foreign intruders, and through sensors they can detect which cells belong to our body. A T-cell can kill a foreign cell, and only 15 minutes later it will be recharged and ready to kill again. In this way, it can kill up to 20,000 cells in a row. But the real power of T-cells comes from their ability to start multiplying by over a hundred thousand fold. The principle of these therapies is simple. You take a T-cell and insert a gene that will encode a molecule that will give it specific properties. One, recognize a cancer cell. Two, kill the cancer cell. And three, multiply. The molecule that accomplishes this is called a CAR, or chimeric antigen receptor. So the cells are called CAR T's. The first CAR T cells used several years ago to treat patients were produced via an autologous process. First, T cells were extracted from the patient and a gene encoding a CAR was inserted in the T cells. Then the modified T cells were injected back into the patient. For the first few days, nothing happened. Then the patient rapidly developed a high flu-like fever. That was a reaction to the CAR T's attacking the cancer. Pounds of tumor were melted down in less than two weeks. The cancer had totally disappeared. In June 2015, doctors from a London hospital working with Selectus had a young patient who had very low levels of T cells, not enough to make even one vial of CAR T's. Because T cells are specific to an individual's immune system, they could not be directly donated to her. Therefore, doctors tried Selectus's innovative therapy based on gene-edited CAR T-cells provided by healthy donors. Selectus essentially engineered a tiny pair of DNA scissors that is programmed to enter T-cells and locate the gene coding for the detection of foreign bodies. Once it finds this gene, and only this gene, it makes a cut in the cell's DNA. The T-cell then naturally stitches back together the broken ends of its genome this time with a mutation that disables its ability to detect foreign bodies. In achieving this, we erased the donor's T-cell's power to identify foreign bodies, and then inserted a CAR gene to make the T-cells focus solely on cancer cells. In June 2015, the first gene-edited CAR T-cells from a healthy donor were transferred to that infant with a low T-cell count and no other therapeutic options. Two weeks later, she was cancer-free, and she still is as of today. Since then, more patients have been treated the same way. This is called the allogeneic approach, pioneered by Selectus. This is a new era in the war against cancer, the era of immune cells as powerful cancer-killing machines. Gene-edited CAR T-cells mark the beginning of what will become the biggest paradigm shift in modern medicine.